Okay, so along with the series, what I've been doing with about creating a trading bot is uh, the next one I want to go over is actually how I'm creating the orders on, for T TD Ameritrade um, using their API. Now, I've seen a lot of videos out there that, um, you know, they'll go over the orders, the order types, stuff like that. I'm not going to do any of that. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there. You can go see that. And I know I'm giving up time, content, maybe, um, you know, views, but hey, I want to keep this short and simple and not waste your time, okay? Because I don't want to waste waste time either. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to bring up TD Ameritrade's uh, website. Okay, and I've already got it up here for, you know, if you're going to uh, adding or creating an order. And you can go through here and you can see what their JSON schema is. Um, you know, what session is it going to be? Is this a complex order or not? You know, is it an OCO, OTA? Um, you know, is it going to be a trailing stop? You know, if it is, are you going to be going um, off the tick or is it a percent? Is it a value? Stuff like that. Okay. And, you know, through their website and uh, through Thinkorswim, you can create a lot of these orders and um, you can get very complex with it too. Um, and I believe you can create option chains and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to cover options. Uh, I'm just, this is just pure equity trades, what I'm doing um, with my bots. So that's all I'm going to cover. Okay. But hopefully this will help other people because I know a lot of this is done. Uh, a lot of people are doing this in Python now. There's not a lot of C-sharp coding out there uh, for this. Whereas I prefer the C-sharp because I want a GUI interface. Okay. Um, so like I said, you can go through here you need, and you need to, okay? Because you need to be able to serialize and deserialize this JSON, okay? Um, so let's jump over my code. So I've got a routine out there that checks, um, like I've got a timer out there on one of my bots that checks every minute. And I'm doing calculations on it like EMA, uh, the MACD, and stuff like this. And um, I'm pulling the order information and to make decisions on whether I need to or create an order or not, uh, whether I'm going to in enter into a, a symbol, into a, into a trade. Okay. And hey, I am not going to talk the greatest. Okay. I am not the greatest personality on camera. So if I screw up my words, just go with it. Um, so what I'm doing through here is, you know, I've got my broker account that I've, you've got to pass into it. Uh, I created a strategy object that's tied back to a strategy database. Um, and, you know, it could be a scalping, momentum, is it a swing, stuff like that. Um, and in that, uh, which I'll show this in another video, what my strategy screen looks like. Um, basically, I, I am sitting there. What's my buy price? What's my stop loss? Am I doing a trailing stop on it? Stuff like that. That stuff is contained within the strategy, okay? And then also as part of that is what's called, I called it strategy rules. So, um, you know, am I, is the last price above the EMA 50 uh, um, or is it above 200 MA? Uh, how close is it to VWAP? Is it the high a day? Um, what's the percent change? You know, is, is the symbol trading up, trading down? But anyways, I'll cover that in another video because that, that goes a little bit more in depth, okay, with the strategy and what you're doing. So on this one here though, um, you know, creating that trade, I want to create that JSON object that I'm going to send back to TD Ameritrade for it to create the trades, okay? Um, so basically I'm coming in here and I've got my strategy, my active trade, this is where I'm going to be tracking it, okay? Because, you know, I want to track what I'm doing versus what TD Ameritrade or your broker has um, because those may not always match up. So uh, I may think I'm in a trade and the trade never really filled. So, you know, I got to deal with that. Okay. So if I'm not tracking it on my side, then I have no way of knowing. I have no way of mirroring or matching those things up uh, with the broker. Um, so here, okay. So active trades, I'm just going to walk through the, walk through my code. Okay. So I want to know if I've got an active trade on that symbol already. And if I do, I'm skipping it. Uh, I don't need to have, uh, I don't need to add to the position um, unless I'm going to ladder into it, uh, ladder in and ladder out of the position. Right now, I'm not doing a lot of laddering or stepping into it and stepping out. Um, 
basically I, I'm taking full positions and selling full positions right now uh, with two of my bots. Um, I plan to add, you know, for swings, uh, you know, be able to ladder in and out. I'm just not there yet. Um, so if I, if that is successful there, then I'm going to go ahead and create the active trade. I'm going to create that record on my side before I even send it to the broker. I want to create a record on my side. Okay. I'm going to come down here. Okay. So now I'm starting to create the order. Okay. And I chose to do this as a string, you know, because JSON, that's all it really is, is a string. So I'm building that long string uh, before I send it off to TD Ameritrade. And uh, there is another guy that I found, uh, and I've got his, uh, his code, um, uh, link back to his code to his Git uh, in another place. But he created model objects um, for different strategy types. Everything that you saw over here on TD Ameritrade. Um, so these right here, he created constants for those. Uh, now I've had to go back and add some new ones. Uh, I've had to uh, update a few of them because his code is kind of old, but, um, it saved a lot of typing on the, in the model objects, uh, those constants. So, um, okay. So here's the github address you can type it in if you want um but what that did is it gave me a baseline of model so i didn't have to type it myself um okay so getting back to uh going through the lines of the code um you know like i said before you get your constants and stuff like that so uh it makes it easier uh and these are tied also into my strategy form so uh you know i can use them both same places and it'll update as it needs to um, right now, just keeping this simple though, you know, I'm just using my first buy object, my first stop object, stuff like that. So one buy, one stop, one stop loss. Okay. Uh, and then I'm just building it line by line. And one of the things that I, I've noticed that, uh, TD Ameritrade does is they have, um, you know, you've got your parent object, then you got your child, and then you could have a grandchild also in there, uh, as part of your orders. And so you've got to make sure that you're layering it correctly so if you notice here um you know i've got the the closing brackets going on for each different sub level um, that's going on so uh, you got to be aware of that okay so i would i would say that uh, once you create your order object before you send it off to td ameritrade or to your broker that you go ahead and you take that text um, that you're generating and then put it into an online deserializer or serializer just to a json uh, converter to verify your results, okay? Verify what you're doing, okay? Now, one of the things I also did was uh, I started paper trading with this first. Uh, I didn't do live trading to begin with. So I probably paper traded with it for about two months and working on orders, stuff like this, and then going over to TD Ameritrade's website, which, you know, you guys can do this. You, you, your broker's website, you can do it. I'm not gonna pull it up, waste time. But I wanna see how the orders were created, okay? and how they showed up in both the, the web portal and on Think on Thinkorswim. So once I got those dialed in, um, and just a, a, a tip for you, do it after hours. That way there, there's no chance of them executing whatsoever. Um, if you screw up, um, just do it after hours. That way you, you can go in through the, the portal or Think and Swim or Thinkorswim and uh, TOS and cancel them out. So not a big deal. Um, so anyways, go through here and then, you know, I want to log my orders. Okay. So how many shares am I buying? You know, um, what symbol, stuff like that. Okay. Now I do mine as OCOs. One cancels another. Um, and the reason why I do that is because I'm going to have different strategies where it's scalp or, uh, momentum. Um, is it a trailing stop order? And so I'm generating that first. So the way mine works, okay, I'm doing the buy first and that buy triggers an OCO, okay? That So I, I may buy at $10 and I, I've got a limit or a trailing stop as my sell, my first sell. And then my next one, because uh, on every order I do, my next one's going to be, um, let me come down here, is a stop loss. Every order I do has a stop loss. 
I don't care if it has a trailing stop um, or not. I'm going to have that stop loss, okay? You know, like I put it in here, it's called risk management. Um, you know, uh, hey, I don't need to use all my capital funds, uh, all my funds, and I don't need to blow up my account. Um, so uh, to take a motion out of it, the bot has a stop loss and it's going to do it every time. And it has saved me quite a few times. Um, so anyways, so once I've got that done, um, you know, I'm going to send in the orders to the broker. Okay. And I've got parameters out here that, uh, that I'm using. Um, <clears throat> that contain like my, my tokens and stuff like this. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to place the trade. So, uh, and then I'm going to look at the results of the return back because, uh, you know, it doesn't, it'll say error in it. I mean, it may not give you the reason why, um, or you can't error trap the reason why sometimes. Um, so it's best to, I, I'm going to log it and then I'm going to investigate it. Okay. Um, but if there's no errors in there, uh, then I'm going to, you know, log that I sent the errors or the log that I sent the order successfully to the broker um, and then move on. Okay. Now, if I run into an issue, okay, anything with the code, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log that error. Okay. So I created a logging level system, uh, which I'll cover that later uh, on another video. But any errors that I'm running into, .NET errors, I'm trying to trap them as best as possible, log it uh, in, my, in my SQL database, and then have the bot move on, okay? So as long as it's not detrimental to the bot, uh, the bot will you know, bypass those errors or, or consume those errors and move on and keep trading, okay? All right, hope that helps. Anyways, if you hit the like button below, if you like the video, definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell beside it. That way you get a notice every time I release a new video. But hey, thank you for watching and good luck with your trades.